All right, so I've nailed a couple of shingles here, and now we're starting to get into some of these walls. So everywhere where you have a wall, you have to have flashing. So you don't get water as it runs down the wall and behind the, the roof system. So we're gonna be installing what's called step flashing. So this will go anywhere where you have a vertical wall meeting the, the roof plane. So it's you know just a 90 degree piece of coated metal. This is aluminum. Um, we, we also use steel. In some cases we use copper, lead coated copper, zinc. We can use higher end metals depending on what roof system that we're doing. For a standard shingle roof, aluminum is kind of the standard for that. Um, now, the, the way that this goes is essentially, it runs here in the wall over top of the shingle. So as the water runs down the wall, so you've got, you know, you'll have siding on the side of this wall or maybe brick, um, but the water runs down, it runs on top of the metal, on top of here, and then out on top of the shingles. So, um, you install this piece here. I'll just go ahead and install this piece. Now, one of the common mistakes that I see in step flashing is guys will put a nail right here. So the problem with that is water can run over to that nail. Again, it takes 10, 12 years for that to actually fail. But once it fails, you can't just take out one piece of step flashing. You have to do the entire wall. So it's a major repair for a misplaced nail. And anytime that you're seeing misplaced nails, whether they're in the shingle, whether they're in the flashing, it's never really just one nail, right? It is systematic. It's a guy that hasn't been trained properly. He thinks he's doing it right. He does it the same way over and over again, house by house, all, all over town. So putting the nails again is, is, seems like such a simple thing, but it is such an integral thing to the overall um, roof system. And there's only about a million nails that are gonna go in this roof. So um, the nail should actually go here in the top corner of the step flashing, right there. So, and then this piece of step flashing will actually bend around the wall. So I'll take my snips, we'll cut this. So. It'll actually bend around the corner of that wall. And again, this will be all behind your siding or um, if there's brick here, you'll get another piece of what's called counter flashing that goes down over top of this metal to keep the, the top leading edge from, from leaking. Um, but once you get that, then we'll be running our next shingle over top of it. So now you're putting one right here up against the wall as well, which is holding that piece of step flashing. And so the next piece will come down over top of the nail that we've just put here, over top of the leading edge of metal, down to the bottom. Again, we will install our nail in the very top corner of the flashing there. Wrap around again. And so on and so forth up the wall. And so what happens is the reason that you're layering these, so you get your next shingle and your next piece of step flashing, which you'll kind of see in sped up version. But as the water runs in, so we, what we will see a lot of times is companies will take and do one long piece of flashing all the way up the wall and then just run their shingles over top of that. Why don't we do that? Because water is building volume coming down that wall. So you're not just worried about the rain that hits any one spot on a roof. You're worried about all of the volume of watershed as it builds. So the top of the roof is actually getting less water than the bottom of the roof because you gotta think it's building a river as, it, as it's coming down the roof. So if you've got a whole one solid piece of metal all the way up and it's raining up against that wall, you know, yeah, you're only getting a little bit of metal in between, you're only getting a little bit of water in between the shingle and the metal up there, but down here you have a ton of volume of water as it's built down the wall. 
So what happens is it, you get so much water down here at the bottom, it overwhelms the pathway of watershed, and then the water starts spreading out over the shingle behind the metal, and it, and it always rots out the bottom portion of the wall. So with step flashing, as the water drives in, it gets on top of this piece of metal, and then it runs out on top of the shingle for every course of shingles all the way up that wall. So the water is never allowed to build volume under the shingles. So you're only ever getting the amount of watershed on any individual piece of metal for each course of shingles. And, it's, and then it's just running out on top. So that's why that you break that into steps all the way up instead of just doing one solid piece. Again, is it easier and faster and cheaper to run one solid piece? It absolutely is. Is that gonna give you a good roof for the, the entire service life of a, of a shingle? It, it will not. So we're gonna step flash everything. So that, that's step flashing. I'll install a couple of pieces. Then I'll also come over here and install a couple of pieces because um, you'll see that we have to do what's called an end wall flashing here on, on this side. So we'll, we'll talk about that flashing detail next. Um, and then I'll give you all of the ammo you need at your next dinner party to talk about roof installation. Okay, now, again, we've kind of got some step flashing going up on that side of the wall. Now we have to turn and get some step flashing up this side of the wall. But we also need flashing on the face of this portion of the wall. This is called a dormer. Um, it's a great training tool because it has a little bit of everything. It has end wall, side wall, and some valley and stuff on it too. So uh, that's, that's why this is built in here. Um, now, I'm going to do a small piece. So typically, a piece of end wall flashing would go the entire length of this wall. Um, you know, it's usually bent in 10-foot pieces on a metal break, bent out on the job for what you need. I'm just going to use a, a piece of step flashing that I've kind of made into an end wall so you can just kind of see how it goes. So it goes right here. It goes up this wall, and then it turns around the wall to allow the step flashing to come down on top of it. Now... This isn't going to be an exposed piece of flashing, which means when we're done, you, you will see the bottom edge of the, of the metal. So we do see a lot of times where, you know, companies will install this piece of metal and then they'll run a shingle right over top of it. The problem is when you do that, when you run that shingle over top of it, you have to nail through the shingle and then into this metal. So now we are gonna nail into this metal to fasten it, but the reason we don't put a shingle over top of it is because when we put the nails in this piece to fasten it, at the end of the job, we will caulk those nails. And so then those nails are never rusting, they're never failing, they're never leaking. Um, if you put a shingle over it and then nail it, even though you will still be able to caulk the top of that nail, the water can run between the shingle and the metal, and then it's on the shaft of that nail, the shaft of that nail is not sealed. So as the water runs down on top of the metal between the metal and the shingle and it finds any of those nails that are holding that shingle, each one of those nails is an actual leak. And one of the worst leaks you can have in the sense that it is a slow progressing leak that is over top of a bunch of structural framing. So anytime you have this wall right here, you have, there's all structural framing components in this, in this transition. And so if you're getting a little bit of water in those nails for every rain from the first rain after the roof is installed, it might be 10 years before you realize that you have a problem. But once you realize you have that problem that's been leaking every single rain for 10 years, what you have is a rotted out wall. So instead, I tell people all the time, if you're going to have a roof leak, you'd rather it be a big leak that the first rain, it just, you know, puts a big spot on your ceiling, leaks right in your house. You would rather have that leak because you know it's happened, you can address that problem at that time. Small leaks, like nails in the wrong place in the flashing or in the shingles or, or between, between a shingle and this metal, those are the worst leaks to have. Even though they're very small and minute, they go on for years before you know that they're a problem. And by the time you see it in, in your living room or your kitchen or wherever, there's major framing work. Unbelievable. So like I was saying, you know, at, you would rather have those leaks show up, you know, in, in, in a major fashion than the, the slow progressing leak. Because by the time you see a small progressing leak that has leaked just a little bit every rain since the roof was installed, and it's been, it's been going on for 10 years, by the time you see that in your, in your house, in your living room, in your kitchen, 
you've got major wood rot, you've got a major repair on your hands because it's, it's now soaked in through the roof deck and into the framing components and into the insulation and just little by little, year by year, you've created an enormous problem. So um, even though this seems like a very small detail, like, oh, I would rather just have this piece covered, you know, for cosmetics, some people prefer that. Uh, it is not an acceptable roof practice because it will create one of those nightmare small leaks that we're talking about. So I will go ahead and install this piece and bend it around the corner so you can kind of see what that looks like. So essentially, you know, you're nailing here in the bottom edge of the metal all the way across. Again, once it's done, we will caulk this nail. You won't even be able to see it from the ground for the caulking. It's super cosmetic. And, and these coated metals come in a, a wide variety of colors. The most common is black, especially if we're doing a black roof, but there's browns, there's grays, you know, so this, this piece of metal can be cosmetic. It can be whatever color you, you truly want it to be. So um, it's just something that, that you can, we can talk about depending on what roof color you choose and that kind of thing. So now to do this properly, so the wall runs down here like this. You want to get to that bottom corner and then you are, marking and cutting an angle on that. So this piece bends around the wall here and this piece goes up the shingles right there. Okay. And then your piece of step flashing comes down over top of all of that. Now on this piece, it's, a, it's kind of an awkward scenario because this piece of metal is not long enough to cover, to cover up this shingle and then this piece comes down where you're gonna actually see it. So in this scenario, we will cut the bottom of this flashing so it doesn't poke out below the shingles. It's not a very cosmetic look. We don't, we don't like that. So we will just trim it. Again, that is for cosmetic reasons on this one. And then the metal's gonna bend around the face like that. Trim a little bit more right here. Again, top corner of the flashing. And again, now this will all be under siding or to brick or whatever, but all of this leading edge of this step flashing will be covered. Um, in most cases, it'll be covered by a siding. So now the water will run down here on top of this metal and out. So there's no way to, to get into the wall or up here on the face. So this is, a, this is completely waterproof. At the end of the job, again, we'll, when we're caulking these nails, we'll also put a little dab of caulking right in there to seal that corner down just as an extra precaution. Um, but you certainly aren't relying on that caulking for any, any long-term waterproofing. So I'll go ahead and install the next couple of shingles up this wall so you can kind of see what a, a final version of this will look like. Um, I'm not going to go and, and roof this entire mock-up. Um, that's just going to be more work for me to tear it all off. So I'll just put a couple of shingles in and then we'll move over to the valley and then um, a couple more details and, and that'll be it. Clean, baby.